Another day, another protest in Israel. The inequality between the ultra-Orthodox and other parts of Israeli society. I grew up and I see in my eyes the situation change between Haredim and Chiloniim. We became from one, one day to the other like two nations and a big wall higher and higher and higher and we almost two nations. And then I understood it can't be. It's catastrophe. We came after 2,000 years, like 100 years ago, that's it. And we came to this small country and here we can't be together. In Eretz Israel, we will be divided for two nations. This is impossible. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Meaningful People podcast. This week's episode, we have Mrs. Silly Schneider, all the way from Eretz Israel. She's the founder of an organization, Kesher Yehudi. Kesher Yehudi makes chavrusa shav, smech shalom between charedim and chilonim. We know there's a long history, especially recently, but we know now more than ever, it's so important that those relationships are nice and strong. And there's so many stories in this episode. I think you will love it. A big thank you to the people who made this episode possible, our friends at Toto to, to, to Vido. That's tovido.com. There are so many shows out there in the world that maybe are on Netflix and YouTube that are pushing agendas and pushing things that you don't want in your house. You don't want your kids watching. You do not have to worry about that when your kids are watching Tovito. They can laugh to Kivi and Tuki. They can sing to the Pentalach. They can dance to Bella and Bracha. These are some amazing shows on Tovito.com. So head there right now. Use promo code MM10 for 10% off. A great discount for you. You will love it. A big thank you to my friends at Collars & Co. Best shirts in the world. Need I say more? Use promo code MEANINGFUL for 15% off a purchase over $100 at collarsandco.com. You want to look good. You want to feel good. You shop at collarsandco.com. And my friend at Town Appliance, maybe you're thinking of doing new construction. Maybe you're thinking of replacing some appliances in your house. You only need to make one call or one message. That message can be on WhatsApp to Town Appliance. Just head to the description on this episode that you're listening to right now. Shoot them a message on WhatsApp. Town Appliance has been killing it ever since 1979. You need a new oven, you need a new dishwasher, you need a new washing machine. Whatever it is, you can go to Town Appliance. And they have amazing customer service. They can take care of you. Thank you for listening to Meaningful Wheel Podcast. Thank you to our sponsors. Hope you enjoy this episode. You are listening to the Meaningful People Podcast. The podcast featuring our nation's most impactful, influential, and meaningful people. I want to start out by asking you to sort of, I guess, introduce yourself, uh, where you grew up, what your childhood was like, what your upbringing was like. Okay. So my name is Siri Schneider, and I grew up in Mea Shorim, in a very, very Hasidic house, and I have special, special neighbors in Mea Shorim, okay? One, one of the biggest neighbors was Rabbi Yashiv Zecher Tzadik Levracha, and I was all my life very, very close to him. Even after my, I got married, my husband became very close to him. And from the other side, I have the Netivot Shalom, Reb Shalom Nach Barazovsky, that he wrote the Netivot Shalom, Nesivas Shalom. And my husband was a Slonimer Chosid. He was his Chosid, and he edited all the book, Nesivot Shalom. So this is the reason why we, we used to live there in Mea We We was not... Uh, really part from the people that were Karta in Mea Shorim, but we lived there because Slonim Shul was there. And uh, I grew up in a very, very, very special neighborhood. From one side was the Hasidim, Slonim. From the other side was the Litvish community, Rebel Yashiv. Downhill was Breslev, if you know the Rehov Salan, the house of Rebel Yashiv. And uphill, was the people that we call them Chof Shi'im. Like we want to say secular, but on this time, when I grew up, the, the word was Chof Shi'im, not even Chiloni'im. And I want to tell you before everything that we live together with such a big harmony and so nice and so happy to be together. And we feel like 
one lucky nation and one lucky neighborhood and we were, we love each other and we I remember my 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 neighbors from the uphill our street there was not not the tea at all and I brought them home to play with me I was a little girl like three four years old and I, I asked my mother mommy can I play with him can I bring them home because they are not they are Hofshiim they are not religious so my mother said what does it mean Hofshiim there is no word such a thing like Hofshiim there is two words that I know Yehudi and Ben Noach there is a Jew there is someone he is not a Jew he's Ben Noach but what does it mean Chiloniim and this was the the main message that I got from my mother that the, we are one nation we can't divide it even we want even when we want not to be one we can't because we became right in this portion yeah. <laughs> that we came to our Sinai from then we became one nation like a Kodesh Baruch who gave us a big glue spell on us like big can Shafach a Blue, big yeah. glue that it stick us to be a big nation. So my mother never let us to say the word Chiloniim, Datiim, Sfaradim, Ashkenazim, Hasidim, Litaim. And this is the reason why I can have a Shidduch from the Litvish side. My husband is a big Litvish, Yeshivisher and Rosh Hashiva today by Reb Tzvi Koshelevsky. And it was, it was perfect. And I remember because of the war, I just have memories from my child, my, when I was a, a little girl, the six days war, I lived there in Measheorim. And I remember the sixth day when we understand that we win the war and we went outside to the street to dance. I remember one of the shul brought out Sefer Torah and we danced together. I remember one of the soldiers took me up on the shoulders and one of the Neture Karta guy came and he took the soldiers on his shoulders and the soldier and I was on the third floor and we <laughs> danced together. <laughs> Haredim, Chiloniim, Hasidim, Sfaradim, not religious, yes, Chayalim, soldiers. We were so happy that and we feel so strong that we are one. We are really one special nation. And nothing can make us different. Nothing can make divide us to pieces because we are one. And the, the, the house, my house, when I grew up, where I grew up, was so open house. I'm sorry about, I'm sorry about my English, okay? And um, uh, I just want, you will believe, believe me that I'm not stupid like I sound in English. Okay, <laughs> but that's what you ask. So I try to do my best, but my English is bad. So uh, my heart- Erroneous, we like to say on this podcast, erroneous. <laughs> Your English is not bad and you you sound very far from stupid, <laughs> I, if I may say. Okay, so my mother raised like a big, big, open house the house wall was open for everyone such a small tiny house in Mea Sheorim we have one big room for the kids one room for very small for the parents and one room for Shabbat Shabbat room is Shabbos room so when we have boys and girls I remember we divide for two rooms Shabbat room was the boys and and uh, the big room was for the girls because we have more girls than boys. And I remember myself, I came home every night after school, after I have to, to count how many foot I see in the rooms to know where can I go to sleep? Mm. Because my house was not my house. It was a public house and it was like, I'm Israel house. This my father, my father and my mother wants to get, to give it to us. That our house is not how, hour and we have to open the house for everyone and we don't ask people question you wear kippah you don't wear kippah you keep shabbat you're not keep shabbat we have one question are you jew or not are you jewish or not was that rare at that time of you growing up was that like a rare thing that your was that was your house sort of the house that was like that but other people weren't like that or would you say that the you know most of mayor sharon was like that no i will tell you the truth in my age 
in, I am, I'm 62, okay? So you can count by yourself. Mm. So in my age, it was not where. The awareness, yes, the awareness came later. And I remember the situation, how the awareness came into our community. The pachad, okay? Yeah, the pachad. The pachad, can? Okay, so I remember it. But in my age, it was, so my, I grew up in a very, very special house. But it was in Mea Sheorim, this house. So it was not, it was not the only house like this. Okay, but the, the thing about it is, is so, is so strong that we are really one nation and we can divide it. So it doesn't make a difference how you dress, how you go, how you do, how you, how you trust, because we are here in Eretz Israel from one reason, from the same reason. So I go back again to Parsha Sitroi, like we stand together under Har Sinai and we screen together Nasev and Ishma. And from this minute, we became one. And we can't divide it. We can't, we can't do it. And when we, when we try, the goyim, like now, everyone see, everyone see, like now the goyim will help us to understand that we are one and we are Jewish and we can't be a other. So I grew up on this house and I remember such a thing. Unbelievable stories. I remember my, 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 my sister was married already with three girls and my mother find a girl that she was in seminar Le Baalot Shuva, Baalot Shuva seminar. And afternoon, she helps my, my sister to keep the kids to... So one day, the, the principal of the seminar called my mother and she said that this girl has to be outside from the seminar. She can't... She can't keep her in the seminar. And my mother wants her to help my, my sister. So my mother ran to the principal and she asked you why you send her away. It's impossible. So the principal said to my mother, the principal was, was very, very big tzadikis, Rebetzin, very big tzadikis. She told to my mother that this girl has two jobs. One job, she walk in my sister's house and after she going to sleep, and in the middle of night, she wake up and she put makeup and she going to the other job, I mean to the street, okay? So she can't hold this girl in the seminar because she's so... So my mother said, if she's in such a weird situation, we have to help her. And I was kala already. I was more engaged already with my husband. One day, I came home and I see the Shabbos room was closed with key, and it was Aliza room. It says Aliza room. Don't come into this room without a uh, provide, without reshut. Okay? So I knock on the door. I said, who take our room? It's all the family room, right? I knock on the door. She opened the door and she said, it's my room. And I saw for my eyes, my linen that my mother bought for me for, for my wedding, my linen, my blanket, my pillow was on the, the sofa. My mother said, listen, she's in a very bad situation. Don't worry, Tilly. I will buy you a new linen. Don't worry. She's in a bad situation. She will be here one or two or three weeks. Okay? This is just example. I want to tell you about this story. We, we ate eight weeks in the hall, very, very small, tiny hall every Shabbat because the room was booked with Aliza. But after the story, my mother sat with Aliza and she said, Aliza, what do you do? Are you crazy? You're going to kill all your life for such a dirty job? So Aliza started to cry and she said, I have a sick, very sick mother in my house and I have to help her. And I have to have two jobs to give my mother medication. Okay? So my mother helped her and uh, blah, blah. And at the end of the story, till my wedding, Aliza was booked in my room. She was in my room. I couldn't even go one step to this, this room. Mm -hmm. Aliza was there and she came to me, with me to, to my wedding. I think my, my mother forgot to buy the new linen. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but uh, but Aliza become 
very, very dati, and she has a special husband, Hasid Breslev, and she has today 10 kids, Baruch Hashem. She's very, very close to me till today, like a sister, but it's just example, what does it mean, open house to everyone, such a tiny, tiny, small house, but it was a house for everyone he wants. I can tell about my house a, lo a lot, but I think- You had mentioned your, your family had a close relationship with Rabbi Yashiv. I'm curious if yes. there is, uh, if you can tell us something like that, that's, you know, obviously one of the G'dali Adar. Um, I, I myself, I think Momo as well, I was uh, fortunate to, to go to Rabbi Yashiv before my Bar Mitzvah. Um, I, I want to know, you know, if there's any family story, Misa, or any, any interaction that you've had with uh, Rabbi Yashiv. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Okay, um, before everything, I have to tell you, that before I opened my organization, Kesher Yehudi, I did it with Rabbi Yashiv. Without him, I was not here today, okay? Uh -huh. He told me and he pushed me and he said, Lech ki lechach notzarta. This is my situation with Rabbi Yashiv. And he was very, very, very serious, involved in every question. When I came to ask about Kesher Yehudi a question, it was before everything for him. He said, this is Klal Yisroel, this is Am Yisroel, Merubim Tzorchei Amcho Yisroel, but this is before everyone, because it's more important, it's Am Yisroel. So I have to start, first of all, I grew up there. So I remember my mother make a cake for Shabbos, and one of the egg in the bowl, in the Keara, I call him Keara, was with a little point, red point, so she sent me with the Keara to Rebbe Yashiv. Uh -huh. And I remember Rebbe Yashiv stand up from the chair, went to the window and look, and he said, it's kosher. I remember a few times with chicken, with eggs, when I was very, very little girl. I have another uh, story, not family, but my husband was there. So it's like my story. Very, very not a uh, regular story about Rebbe Yashiv. And I think no one knows this story. So Got a scoop. my husband has a, f well, yeah, it's a scoop. <laughs> yes. My husband has a friend that he got a cancer in the lung. Okay. So he came to Rebel Yashiv to ask a Shaile. He said that there is a new medicine. It was a years ago, maybe 40 years ago, something like this. No, 30 years ago, something like this. He said he has a new medication that he can all on or to help him or to kill him. So it will be it, it can be very, very good for him, but the sakana, the the risks, the danger. The risk is very big. So it's all or matzim a nav shel goses, like to help a, a guy that he's going to die to to be killed before, or it will it will save his life. So Rebbe Yashiv said that all the table was full with books. And Rebbe Yashiv said, please take all the books from the table. And he told the, the boy, go and lie on the table. I told you it's a scoop. Yeah, it's not Rebbe Yashiv's stories. And Rebbe Yashiv told him, go on the table and lie down. And the boy like opened the eyes, what's going on over here? And he lie on the table. And Rabbi Yashiv start to, to touch him, to touch, to touch, to touch the lungs. And then he said, don't take the medication because you will be fine. And the boy, you know, stand up again and, Rebbe, what's going on? What does it mean? It's not your way. It's a moifes, it's a nes. Are you understanding uh, refuah? You know something about so Rabbi Yashiv said, no, I don't know nothing about refuah, but I put a lot of efforts, efforts to learn about kashrus. And I try to, to touch a lot of lungs of behema to be sure that I know about kashrus of behema. So I don't know about refuah, but I know to check lungs. Mm. And that, this wow. is the story. Wow. I know exactly how to check lungs. This was the story. Uh, for me, it was very, and I have another one story that uh, I grew up there. So 
I don't know if you know, but in the history, the Neture Karta and Rebel Yashi was not such a big uh, good friend, right? And I don't remember exactly, Rebel Yashiv sat in uh, Hal Shlomo, and the Neture Karta dis- didn't like it. So a person of, ne- of Neture Karta uh, came to Rebel Yashiv, and he waited to him in the corner. When Rebel Yashiv crossed the corner, he threw on him eggs and tomatoes. And Rebbe Yashiv become like right. dirty. I don't know if you know him, but he was very, very, very sensitive to his uh, clean, very... Uh, Hy- hygienic, yeah. Okay. And <laughs> he, took, he took the mitpachat from his uh, package and he cleaned his face. And he said, Ani mevarech oto shelo yeh lo zman laasot shtuyot. I want to give him a broche wow. that he will not have time, empty time, to make stupid things like this. This man has no kids. Eight years without kids. After this broche of Revel Yashiv, he got triple, 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 three babies, and, was, and they was in two hospitals. The three babies was a long time, like maybe 10 months, in two hospitals, so he has no time to make stupid things, okay? Wow. Wow. Yeah. So the yeah. story is the Rebbe Yashiv, in the minute, when a person does it, change it. He understand how, how big is it, this Maseh, so he changed it right away to Broche, okay? Amazing. We'll be right back to this episode of the Meaning Fuel podcast. But first, a word from our friends at Alpert and Associates, Ceremian. So something I want to stress this week is if you do not have life insurance, it is the greatest investment that you can make in your family. Besides for investment, it's a necessity. You need to take care of this today. Stop what you're doing. If you don't have life insurance, maybe you just got married and you're like, ah, I don't know, I'm young. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. This is something you owe to your family, to your children. Call Moshe Alpa right now at 718-644-1594. Amongst other things, something he can help you out with is a great life insurance plan. He did it for me. He did it for my friends. Make sure you give him a call today at 718-644-1594 or email him at albertmoshe at gmail.com. And a big welcome to my friends at Hire Remote. Are you looking to hire an employee? Hire Remote is a dedicated remote staffing agency focused on your success. You don't want to be paying those crazy prices. You don't want to be getting people that you don't know or don't trust from other places in the world and you don't have the time to vet. That's why you use Hire Remote. Hire Remote doesn't just fill seats in your office. They pick talent. They manage HR. So maybe it's e-commerce, Amazon, project management real estate management, whatever it is, they have those jobs and they could pick them for you. So you're going to head to hireremote.com, do more, pay less. That is their slogan. They transform the way that your business works. All these employees through Hire Remote are vetted very, very seriously. So you can trust the people that they are recommending. You save time, you save money. That's why you need to be hiring today through Hire Remote. Now back to this episode. I, you know, I would ask you the similar question that Nachi asked you about Ramal Yashiv. I would ask you the same question about the Nesiva Shalom. Our Rav here in New York, in North Woodmere, is a Slonimer Chassid, a Slonimer Einikol. He's oh, a Weinberg, Rav Shmuel Weinberg is a mm-hmm. Ben Acher Ben from the Slonimer Rebus, And he was very close with his great uncle, the Nesiva Shalom. And w- would love to hear if you have any, anything that you're able to share about growing up in such close proximity to the Slonimer Rebbe. Okay, so first of all, we are very, very close to him. My father edited his book, okay? He write his book and he edit his book. My father was his first hand, mamash, mamash. My father was like a tutor to the Slonim Rebbe of today. The, the Nesiv wow. Sholem called him from wow. Tveria to be the tutor when he was like 16 years old to help his son, the Rebbe of today. And today my father and the Nesiv Sholem are mechutonim nine times. Okay, so we are very, very close, and I have Explain a lot that. of stories to, to tell you about. Machatanim nine times. How does that work? Yeah, through Einiklach, I presume. Through, through uh, five for my father Einiklach, 
Okay. And four for my, si- my father's sister, Annie Klach, married to Annie Klach of Netivot Shalom. Nesiv <laughs> Shalom. Wow. Small world. Okay, so <laughs> mechutonim, <Wow>. mechutonim, mechutonim, <laughs> even my side not, because I have, uh, some of my sister are Litvish, so we are right. not connect to this side, but from the Hasidish side, we are, we are very... In America, we say, if it ain't broke, don't yeah. fix it. If it ain't broke, don't <laughs> fix it. You just have to come up with new Sheva Brachas, and that's all. <laughs> well, well, could be yeah. they sign like a 20-year contract. Yeah. So like anyone who's like born. It's me. <laughs> yeah. No, you have to know. My father is over 90, so Baruch Hashem. Wow. And her. So I, one, one story about the Netivot Shalom touched me very, very, very strong. Um, it's a hard story, but this is it. I have, a, I have a, a, someone very, very close to me that she was married with a, with a, a sick person, like a mentally sick, okay? Yeah. Very, very sick. And she was very close to the Netivo Shalom. And, and the doctor said, you have to, do, you have to, you have to cut. You can't, you can't continue with this problem because you have kids and you have to keep your kids. You can't, you can't continue. So she went to the Netivot Shalom. Why? Because first of all, because she was very close to him. Second, and I went with her. Second, because uh, Netivot Shalom. Netivot Shalom. She wants Shalom Bait and she doesn't want to cut. She loves her husband. She loves him. Really loves. And he was very sick and very dangerous. So I remember the Netivot Shalom said to her two things. First of all, you have to know. She said, I love him and I don't want, the Mizbeach will cry. You know, every, every divorce, the Mizbeach cry. So he said, I don't want, you will cry. The Mizbeach can cry, but not Bas Yisroel like you. I am the Netivot wow. Shalom can tell you, the Netivot Shalom can, cannot take that you will cry. The Mizbeach can cry. What will be if the wow. Mizbeach will cry? And second of all, I want to tell you, Mrs. Whatever, that you will be from today my daughter. He never spoke with women. Never, never, never. Only with men. And if a woman wants to come, she has to come with her husband. Right? He said, you will be my daughter. You can call me whenever you want instead of Shabbos. Okay? And it, it's really very, very helping. And... Uh, Okay, Incredible. and that's it. So uh, this, I was, yeah. I was in the meeting, okay? Wow. I want to ask <laughs> you, obviously you started this amazing organization, Kesher Yehudi. I want to know, um, leading up, what was, what was happening in the world? What was happening in Maya Sharam that led you to, I guess, start such a movement? And if you could describe for the people listening, what exactly is Kesher Yehudi? Okay, so I'm going back to Rebel Yashiv for a few minutes because I told you, that Rebel Yashiv created with me the organization. Yeah. And he said that, I'm, I don't know how he knew it <laughs> such a long time ago, but he, he understand that Am Israel needs to be together, needs to go back to the point when we was in Ar Sinai Bezrat Hashem. And, uh, and he was very, very serious with every question. When we came to him, we asked him a few questions, and everyone told me, don't go to Rebel Yashiv to ask, because he's not a Kiruv person. He's a big Poisek, he's a big uh, Lochedik. Rebel Yashiv is a Poisek. Not the, the, but he took every question with such a big responsibility, and such a big, he gave such a big meaningful, meaningful to every question, to every, and, and he spoke with my husband, like this is before everything. So I remember a few questions about what you ask now. I remember that we asked him what we will do if a person in Kesha Yudi, Chayelet, soldier, women, w- woman soldier, will be Bala Tshuva and she wants to go out from the army. What we have, we, we, we have to help her or not? We have to help her or not? Because to be in the army for a lady, it's like Yaorik ve'al ya'ovor lefachot leshitat ha'chazonish ve'leshitat ha'rav el-yashiv. As what we will do if Chayelet won't become Baratshuva and she wants to go out from the army. 
So Rabbi Yashiv said to me, don't help you to go out. Don't help you to, to go out because we need, the army will be Baalei Tshuva. We, and if, we, if the army mm. will have Baalei Tshuva, they will lose, the, they will go out from the army. They will not let you to go into the army. So you have to keep your relationship with the army for the future. So this makes me very big wow. understand how heavy Arav Eliashiv took this organization and this opportunity to make chibur, to make connection between Haredim and Chiloniim through the Torah. I understand that it's not a joke. It's not like my dream. I dream. I have, I'm wild. I have a special dream and I want to change the world because I, no, it's much more serious. It's much more, um, need to Am Yisrael now. And this Arav Yashiv gave me, gave me the understand that it's not, I can't, I can't, I can't lose it. I can't give up. I can't cry that I don't have money. I can't. Because I have to do it, because this is the Hatzole of Klal Yisroel. This Arav Eliashiv told me much more than one time. This is the Hatzole of Klal Yisroel. To be together, to understand that we are Jewish, and to be Keruv and Achdus, Achdus and Keruv. This is the Hatzala of the future of Am Yisroel. And he was very, very strong inside. So you ask me how I create Kesha Yehudi, right? So I told you that I grew yes. up in very, very big Achdus. And I remember the names of the Chayalim of Sheshet Hayamim on my fridge. And it, become, it came Erev Pesach. And I told my mother that I want to clean the fridge from the names. It was on, 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 on a marker. I want to clean it, the names of the Chayalim, because Erev Pesach, she said, no, 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 this is holy names. Don't take it out. So we was in such a unity situation and I grew up and I see in my eyes, the situation changed. We became from one, one day to the other, like two nation and a big wall coming from nothing and higher and higher and higher and heavier and heavier and heavier. And we almost two nations. And then I understood it can't be. It's catastrophe because we went together from, from its rhyme, right? We went to Ar Sinai. We was in a, such a big Achdus situation, one time in all of our history. The second time was in Shlomo HaMelech, all, also short time. But we was together in Ar Sinai and we went together to Eretz Israel because Hashem told us, Come with me to Eretz Israel, Lekayem Torah Mitzvot, to be Shomer Torah Mitzvot. And we came to Eretz Israel, and Hashem gave us, with a lot of miracle, all this Eretz Israel. And we, Mishkan, and Besamikdosh Rishon, Besamikdosh Sheni, and we was here for more than 1,000 years, right? With Torah Mitzvot. And then, we, we was killed, right? Not killed. It kalkalno. Chatano. It kalkalno. We change our way and we stop little by little the Torah and Mitzvot. Then Hashem otzi otano bechazara ugeresh otano me'aretz, right? It took us out from Eretz Yisrael and he, gave, he put us in the Golus, right? For 2,000 years. All these 2,000 years, we know very, very strong that we are one. Even we, you have such a big, such a, 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 a shone, different culture and language and food and, and, and places and government, everything was changed. It was not the same, right? Like Germany people, Jewish people, Jewish people live in Germany and in, in, in Australia and in Morocco, in Tehman, in uh, Iran. And we was so strong with three things. That's what I think. First, we are Jewish. We love the Jewish nation. We love to be Jewish and we know that people hate us and we are Jewish. We know it very clear in the Golus. 
2,000 years without this, without language, without clothing, without culture, without such a so different life and so one life in this three point. Second of all, that we want to go back to um, to Eretz Israel. Third of all, we are Jewish with our Torah mitzvot. This make us different from all the Amim. We are Shomrei Torah mitzvot. We have one Shabbos, we have one Tfilin, we have one Sefer Torah, even in Rabbeinu Tamen Rashi, I call it one, and we have one <laughs> Yom Kippur, and one, we have the same thing. Even I live here in uh, Czechoslovakia, and he lives in Teiman. We have the same Aloha, the same Shabbos, the same Shkia, and Chatzois, and all the things, we are the same. These things make us Jewish. So this is three things. First of all, we are Jewish. Second of all, we are Jewish with our Judaism, with our Torah and mitzvot. Third of all, that we want all of us Mashiach, and we want to go back to Eretz Yisrael. So here is the catastrophe. After 2,000 years, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us another chance. Okay, we, I will try. Let's go back. You want so much to go to Eretz Yisrael? Okay, we try to give it to you back. We came after 2,000 years, like 100 years ago. That's it. And we came back to this Eretz Yisrael, and here, in Eretz Yisrael, we will be divided for two nations. This is impossible. After we, we, we could, we did it, we win it. We keep ourselves one nation in, I think, in 80 or 85 Medinot countries, right? And we came to this small country, and here we can't be together. This is ridiculous. So this make me the energy to go to create Am Israel Mechadash, to understand that we are one, and we are one, it's mean, Hashem Echad, Kuchabrichu, Israel, Ve'oraita Chadem. We are one because we are one nation, and we as one God, and we as one Torah that make us the glue to be one. So the situation that I grew up in a, in a nice community together, and I grew and grew and grew and see it's changed, the atmosphere changed. I remember myself, I was a teacher, Besiakov teacher for 25 years, okay? I was a first grade, I was in the eighth grade, I was in a, in a um, math, okay? I, I was a teacher for 25 years. My husband was in a koilel, and he was a magichiu, and I have to bring home something to eat. So I was a teacher. And I remember myself, I, 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 I was here in Ramot after my wedding in Shkunat Ramot Yerushalayim. I was on the bus with another lady. She also was a teacher. And I was with her maybe four years. Usually on the same bus, okay? She went to school and I went to my school. She went back to Ramot to, to take the kids from the kindergarten and I came back to Ramot. I think three or four years, I don't remember exactly. But I think one day I sat on the bus and I think to myself, how it can be that I never spoke with this lady? Just because she has pants and I have shaitel? This is a reason. I are here because of the same reason. We choose Yerushalayim to live because of the same reason, because we love Yerushalayim. We love Eretz Israel. We lost our pass our houses in Poland or in Czechoslovakia or in Morocco, right? And we came here, why? Why? Because of the same reason. So how it can be that here, I don't have something to speak with you. Not any conversation, not any communication, not any conversation, never for three years. I, I'm not, I don't think that we was every day together on the bus, but I met here a lot on this bus. So sure. I decide that we have, that something, happened here during the year, and today there is a big, big choma, big stone, big wall between the Haredim and Chiloniim, and it's chas v'shalom will make us for two nations. 
And then I decided to, to start. I thought, the people are not bad. The people are not bad. Both sides are not bad. And the people did it. They went to their corner and they went extreme to the other corner because they was afraid one from the other. The Chiloniim was afraid from the Haredi community. The Haredi, first of all, not going to the army and not paying taxes and all these kind of things. But more than it, the Haredi have a lot of kids. And we build here a Medina not to be Bnei Brak, not to be Iran. They have a really reason what to scare about, right? And the Haredim was scared the kids from the Haredi side will be not religious. It's also right. a big threat, right? Threaten. It's a big threat. So they become like far and far. Everyone went to his corner and I understood that it's impossible. And I went to Rebel Yashiv and Rebel Yashiv was stronger than me. And this is the why we create Kesher Yehudi. That's amazing. We'll be right back to this episode of the Meaningful People podcast. You have Meister money. We all have Meister money. Baruch Hashem. Some of us have Meister money. And uh, something that it's important to do is you want to keep track of exactly how much Meister you have. Are you given the exact amount? There is this new app called the Meister app. You need to download the Meister app right now. Apple Play Store, Google Play Store, kosher phone play stores. The app helps you keep track of your Meister all in one place. You can record income and that income tells you how much Meister you should be giving. You can record a donation and then it deducts it from the Meister that you're supposed to be giving. You can print reports, you could save receipts. Everything could be organized. If you're someone who's serious about your Meister, you'd like to keep track of it, you need to download this app today. So head to the App Store, head to the Google Play Store on your respective phones, Download the Meister app today. It's a Segula for Wealth to keep giving Meister and keep track of it with the Meister app now. I, I, I think it's so important, especially nowadays with what's what going on in, in the world, but of course in Eretz Yisrael, leading up to this, to this uh, Milchama that we're in right now, you know, it was very, very divided. It really was probably at the peak of, of two different nations. Um, what, what is some, I guess, what is some work that Kesher Yehudi is doing to bridge that gap, uh, to bring it closer and closer. Kesha Yudi, bridge this gap, okay? This is, this is what we do, okay? We're not speaking about Achdus, we make Achdus. I know the word Achdus, today it's like nothing, right? It's not yeah. like everyone say Achdus, Achdus, let's, let's love, let's... I don't speak about empty words. I speak about the really words Achdus, it's Am Israel Echad. It's not just to respect each other, even is not in my way. It's not only to live together like two nations, okay? Like, uh, it's to be one. He is my brother. All of them are my brother. I think we can make them one only with the one thing that make us the connection is the Torah. I don't speak about Chazara B'Tshuva and Keruv. I speak about our big, big, big Nechis. Nechis? Treasure, okay? We have Otsar. And this Otsar, this treasure, our Torah, our Tanakh, our Talmud Bavli, and all Otsar Asfarim Yehudi, all this treasure, it's, it's, everyone belong to this. Yes, if you are religious or not, this is our. No one can go with me to the lawyer to sign that he has no chelek in the Torah, chas v'shalom. Even I will pay him $500, no one will come to sign I don't have chelek by Torah, because the Torah is a nechis, is a osher shelanu. It's the ashirut achi gedola sheish lanu the Torah. What if somebody tells you, what if somebody tells you who's, who's chiloni, they... They don't want. They don't want the Torah. They don't want anything to do with the Torah, and they they don't like the Haredim. Is there a path for someone like that to to bring Achdus? Yeah. First of all, yes, but I don't think that you will find someone who will tell me this. No one say it. I ask. I ask. I make a, a research. I make a research. I came to the Mechina Gdam Tzvait. I will tell you soon about the Mechina Gdam Tzvait. I came to Mechina Gdam Tzvait, and I said, they they said, why you learn with us only Torah? 
every meeting only Torah. Because you bring a big group of Haredim and we are Chiloniim. Let's do it one time Torah and one time from our books. Okay, like Bialik, like Chernikhovsky, like Echad Ha'am, like, like 50-50. So I said, because the Torah is not mine. The Torah is our. We will learn every time about what is our heritage, our neches, our otzar, okay? We will learn together our Torah because it's mine and yours. Well, call Yehudi, every Yehudi has a piece in the Torah, as his chelek in the Torah. So what we did in Kesha Yehudi, we tried to connect the extreme about your, your question, about the, ex, uh, we try to connect the extreme side. We don't speak about the Dati'im Leumi'im because they are fine. We took from the extreme side. I'm very Haredi, like mainstream, like, uh, you know, Yeshivish, like Morayn Besyakov, teacher in Besyakov. I'm very, and we took, we want to take this Haredi community and to put them in the front to bridge the gap, okay? To put them in the front to understand they can bridge the gap, okay? And we take also the Chiloniim. We not take people like they are chatsi chatsi. They sh if they, if they Shomer Shabbat, I think they don't need me. They don't need me. I want to make the connection only with the two extreme side because I want to help the two extreme side to understand that the achdus in Am Yisrael is depend by the extreme people. And if the extreme people will understand that we are brother and I can have very big benefit from this achdus, it will work. It will work. Because if we will see the, the, the extreme very good friend and very good brothers and sisters, so the other one, not the extreme, will be okay. Because they will not, they don't have the hate. They don't have the, the sin'a, the real sin'a to the other side. So we took the, the, two, the two extreme side and we tried to make two people together. I said, listen, I cannot do Ahdus in Kol Am Israel. I cannot. But I can take every couple. If every religious person that he has, he is Shomer Torah or Mitzvot, Shomer Shabbat, Ma'arich Lomdei Torah, I appreciate Lomdei Torah. We'll have one secular friend and every one secular friend, good friend, will have one friend in yeshiva. Am Israel will be in another position, in another situation at all. Am Israel will change. I want to tell you the basic of these things. We don't have to agree each one with the other side. I am not agree with a Jewish that he is not Shomer Shabbat. I don't have to be agree with him. And he don't agree maybe with me that my son never will be in the army. He can, he can be angry at me and he can be not agree. But we have to agree about this thing that we love each other and we have to love each other and we have to be and to understand that we are brothers. We have to, to feel that we are brothers and sisters. And this is the more important thing for me. We, doing, we do it during the Torah, Limut Torah, because the Torah is the best, the best glue, the best super glue, right? To, to make the connection. You can see people, they learn together. After five, before, there was two strange people. They don't know nothing about the other side, and after 10 minutes, they sit together and learning, they became such a big, good friend. And they understand that all the propaganda, all the stereotype, stereotype about every side, about the other side, I can tell you, I grew up with all the Haredi media, with the Itonim. I think they lie us. They lied. It was not true what I, what I see in my eyes. It's different people. So after 10 minutes, they learn to get us something to, and understand that we are Jewish together and I depend by you and you depend by me and we need each other. So they become 
friend, they forgot that who is the Haredi, who is the Chiloni, they become good, good, good friend. So I just want to tell you numbers. Today, Baruch Hashem, we may, I think we make about 16,000 couple till today. They make v- wow. at least once a week very good conversation, oh. but it's called Kesher Yehudi. We don't speak only about Limud Torah. We speak about two things, Kesher Yehudi. Kesher is, the, is to build together a strong, strong connection. And Yehudi is to take the connection to our Judaism, right? So it's called Kesher Yehudi. We try to build ourselves together with our Judaism. One of the beautiful aspects of what I'm hearing from you as you're describing the relationships that are being created and formed and developed through Kesher Yehudi is that it's not one-sided and it's not just where you have from people, Haredi people doing Kirov as a service. Not at all. Those that are not being Shermer Shabbos, but rather there's this, there's this recognition that Am Yisrael is lacking as long as one ice in the Torah is not, is not functioning, is not activated. So then the entire Jewish people is, is suffering to some extent, is, is lacking in, to some extent. And as much as the, as much as the Chiloni, as, as much as the secular Israeli person is benefiting from being exposed and being activated to the Torah and to, to connection with Hashem. So to the Haredi community is benefiting from that as well through that unity that is being created. And, and that's such a beautiful layer of what you're doing. Okay. So I want to tell you before it, two things. I remember when I was in a, in my kindergarten teacher, when I, not teacher, when I was in a kindergarten, when I was very, very little girl, and then I have five girls, and everyone in the Mesibat Siyum, congregation, in the Mesibat Siyum of the kindergarten, we, we have the same, because every year, every year the Mesibat Siyum is close to the three weeks, right? Because it's on July or something like this, it's close to the three weeks. So the subject in the Mesibat of the kindergarten is almost the same till today. They have like stones, and the kindergarten teacher said, every good thing that you do, you can take one stone and like this, we will build Beis Migdosh, Ashlishi, right? Every good thing, you make a kibud orim, you make a vadarta pnei zaken, you, you make vitur. So every good thing that you do and every girl come with the stone and put in the middle and we see Beis Migdosh Ashlishi coming from our good things from our mitzvahs. It's very nice for the kids, but I think that it's serious that every couple of Kesher Yehudi, because they do it of both sides, and they do it both to make Am Yisrael stronger. There is no teacher and pupil, student. No. If you want to come to teach, this is not in Kesher Yehudi. You cannot do it in Kesher Yehudi. You come to learn together, just to understand that we are Jewish together. So I think every couple, Hashem, please take this couple. I think every couple of Kesher Yehudi, it's a big new stone of Beis HaMikdosh Ashlishi. Because we build Am Yisrael Me'uchad. And we can't build Achdus if you are the teacher and I have to come like a Nebush to learn by you how to keep Shabbos. This is not Kesher Yehudi. I will be very happy with every soldier that he will be, he will be Shomer Shabbat. Okay? I will be very happy with him. But this is not our goal. Our goal is to give them to the understand they are brothers and we are one nation and we have one Torah. And he will do with it whatever he wants. The benefit is very, very, very big for the two sides. And before I tell you about the benefit, I want to tell you about the Mechina, IDF Mechina program in Kesher Yehudi. Okay, it's a big miracle. I don't know why, but we, we have very, very, a miracle success 
to have uh, opportunity to go to the Mechina, IDF Mechina. There is, I, I will tell you what does it mean. There is in Eretz Israel about 70 secular IDF Mechinot. It means schools, a gap year before the army, the government choose the students, they will be, they are the elite, boys and girls, and they will be the leaders in the futures in the army and in the political and in all, in, in all the future, they will be the leaders. The government choose them and they let them to go one year before the army to go to Mechina program to learn about leadership, to learn about Judaism, to learn about Zionism, to learn about who the history of Am Israel and Eretz Israel and all these kind of things. They have very, very, very special idealistic year. Okay? So I don't know how, but this is the fact. From these 70 schools, this year we work with 31 Chiloniim Mechinot. What we do with them. Wow. Every Mechina is very, very, it's not in the city. We have also in the city, but it's from the north till, till the south, all Eretz Israel covered with this kind of schools. It's called Mechina Kdam Tzvait, or IDF Mechina, okay? So every, every school has like 80 to 90, maybe 70 boys and girls. And all of them will go to the army to be the officers and to be, to sign for four years or five years, not only three years. They are very, very strong boys and girls, elite. And we take, for every, every Mechina, we take the closest community, Haredi community, the closest. Sometimes we don't have, so they have to come to us to Yerushalayim. If no, any community from Nil. But we have a lot of from communities involved. In Rechassim, in Achisamach, in Haifa, in Yerushalayim we have five, in Tel Aviv, in um, Kiryat Gat, in Ashdod, in Rehovot. I cannot even tell you how much places we have. And we, we tell them in the beginning of the year, look, we have 80 boys, Chiloniim, 80 boys from the Haredi side. Very Haredim. I take the main stream, the hardcore of Haredim. This is the people, they join us. And 80 to 80. I mean, we count boys and girls, Kamuvan from both sides. And we take them in the beginning of the year. We said, listen, this is not a, proje a project for one year. We want to build connection between you, but we want this connection will going with you after the Mechina will finish. After this Mechina will finish, this year will finish. You have one year to build with this person strong, strong connections, okay? And we make them 10 events in the, during the year. Every event is very big, heavy subject in Judaism, like Bechira Chofshit, like Ma'amad Aisha, like Matan Torah, Haya or Lo Haya, okay? And we bring a speaker and he gave a speech for 20 minutes maybe, and then materials, and then the Chavruses sit together to learn about this subject. 10 times a year. They have 90 minutes to learn together. They have 90 minutes to sit and to learn together. Okay? So you can see 80 boys and girls Chiloniim with 80 boys and girls Haredim Yoshvim Beyachan. And this, I invite everyone that he hear me to come to call Kesha Yehudi and to see one IDF Mechina, how it's going with Kesher Yehudi. It's unbelievable. Well, I can tell you, but it will not be, it will, like, to see you it is something. You have to see it from themselves, yeah. Yeah, you have to come to see it, yeah. So, oh, yeah. After, the, after the 90 minutes finish, I said, listen, we have, it's, it's, it's a very big uh, subject. We can't finish this subject about Pchirach of Shit for 90 minutes. It's impossible. So you have one month till the next event 
you have one month to discuss this subject between every Chavrose. And you have to find each other to go to Bet Cafe, to invite him to your house, to invite him to your Mechina, to sit together and to finish with this subject because next month you will have another subject. And the main, main, main event during the year is the Shabbaton. The Shabbaton is in the Haredi community and all the, all the community, all the, all the neighbors knows the Mechina already because they're coming. One month they're going from the Haredi community to the Mechina and one month they're coming from the Mechina to the Haredi community. So all the neighborhood knows them and hug them and wait for them and prepare very nice Shabbos and the kids eating by the Chavruses, everyone go to eat by the Chavruses and we make Oneg Shabbat together and we make Shaleshudes together and we make maybe Kumzitz, if it's in the winter we can make Kumzitz right. in the end of the Shabbos together and this is the year, okay? During this year, I can understand how big is the benefit for the both sides. Just from the Mechinot, I can see it so, so clear. The end of the Mechina, the end of the year, it could be on uh, May or June, something between May and June, it's the end. Every Mechina has another date. To f we make a big party for the Siyum. And we ask them, who think he will be in real connection with his friend more than this year? And the answer is really not, un is really unbelievable, but 100% sa said yes, maybe 99%. Yes, I want to continue. Are you agree to put effort on this connection to build it and to put and to give time and to give attention to this connection? Yes, we want it because we need it. And just think about the situation that this year, this war, there is 4,000 soldiers. They have real connections with 4,000 Bachurei Yeshiva. Okay? Avrechim, Avrechei Koilel. 4,000 this year. In the first two weeks in the, this war, I was so busy just to help them to find because they couldn't find the soldiers because the, the soldiers was with, without telephone, right? Yeah. No telephone. So I have to go to the Mechina and to call them and to have the phone of the mother and to tell the mother, my Yossi wants to see Rimon, okay? And he wants to meet with him, he wants to, he, he wants to pray with, for him, he wants to... So in the end of the Mechina, in the, in the party, in the end of in the, the last day of Kesher Yehudi with the Mechina, you can see what happened and you see they understand they not only make benefit to themselves, it's a benefit for Am Israel. Because if I have one friend and he will have one good friend and he will have one good friend, we will change all the atmosphere, all the atmosphere in Eretz Israel. And also, I ask them in the, in the day, in the end day, I, in the end of the year, I ask them, what did you get from this year in Kesher UD program? All the Haredim said, don't ask me, because I got the best boy in the world. I got a mm -hmm. special present. I don't know about the others. I have, my friend is the best person in the world. And I can tell you that I, I can tell you that I learn from him so much. But I also learn about myself, how much a Korasat Toiv I have to give these soldiers. They're going to be Moser Nefesh for Am Israel. I cannot sit and learn in my yeshiva if he is not in the army. So I have to give him all my life. I have such a big chorus at toiv to every soldier that I see him. And more than it, the chiloni. But I'm telling you the truth. You have to come and to see it. Because you will not, maybe you will <laughs> not believe me. The chiloni said, yeah. I, I change all my perspective 
about Hashem, about my connection with Hashem, to understand that Hashem loves me and Hashem wait me to daven for him. You have to know that they don't know it. They, no one told it to them before, right? That Hashem wait to hear from him that he is davening. I think it's ridiculous to send a boy to the army to take from him at least three years, the best years, to put him in danger after danger situation and not to tell him that he is strong because Hashem is with him, because Hashem loves him. It's such a big chesed to the chayalim just to open them the eyes, to give them the understand why they are fighting for, why it's such important to keep Am Yisrael. And Hashem is with you on the tank. Hashem, Hashem expecting for your davening. Hashem crying for your davening. So all of them said that they change the perspective about Shomrei Torah Mitzvot, our life. They change the perspective about the connection with Hashem. They change the perspective about to be a Jew. What does it mean to be a Jew? So I, th I just think about the, these 4,000 soldiers today, they have such a nice year, not only a year ago, 4,000 is from three years, something like this, can? This year we have, we have uh, 1,800 soldiers, they learn together in the Mechina this year. So in the next year, we will have 6,000 soldiers in the army. I want to ask you if, this, so this is the last question I have, but if you can, if there are Chilonim that are watching right now, let's say they stumbled upon this, this podcast, what would you, what would you tell them? Um, what would you tell them? Maybe they have misconceptions about Haredim. Maybe they, they have a certain ideology. What would, you, what would you say to them watching right now? I will, I will tell you what I think. I think I have the same, the same answer to the Haredim and to Chilonim. Okay? Don't listen to the media. They lie you. Okay? Don't listen to the media. People put bad and lie things in the media and the hate become go to check. Go to know each other. Go and see the beauty of the other side. They are not other side. We are on the same side. We are not two nations. We are not two sides. Go right. to check. You will discover a new thing that you don't know about it, nothing. And I can tell it to the Haredim and to the Chiloniim because they are in the same situation. We are both eating what the media give us to eat, right? And the media has interesting and the media has... Uh, but this is not the people. And the people eat. What you give yeah. them, they eat. But just go to check. I said to the Haredim, what do you think? What a, a small, a young boy, 18 years old, is agree to give his life for you, or for himself, or for his family, or, or for Eretz Israel. He is a hero. He is a hero. Did you think about him like a hero? He is a hero. And I say to the, the, the Chiloniim, you, you think about a person that he has three kids in the house and he's sitting and learning from the morning to the night because he wants to keep Am Israel Ruach, Am Israel soul. Yeah? You keep the body, they keep the soul, the Ruach of Am Israel. So he is a hero because he gave all his life to Am Israel, right? To pay taxes, it's, it's, it's the law, but you can give your life to Am Israel. And I think every Shomer Shabbat makes, every, every person that is learning Torah, he keeps Am Israel Ruach. Because everyone knows, even the Chilonim knows, without Torah or Mitzvot, we will not be Jewish nation anymore. Yeah? I tell them uh, more than one time, I told them Echinot, Please close, the, close your eyes and think about Medinat Israel without one person Shomer Shabbat. What do you think will be in this Medina? If all Medinat Israel 
רק שאלה תיאורטית, איך אומרים? תיאורטית. כן. Like, מדינת ישראל will not let anyone to keep Shabbat. So all the שומרי שבת will go to the five town, to Woodmere, or to Lakewood, or to Brooklyn, okay? And no one <laughs> שומר שבת will stay here. Close your eyes and think what will be the future of this מדינה. So they think, and one can say, it will be not Jewish land after 60 years, And the, other say, and the other one we say, it will, no, it will take shorter time. It will be 20 years enough. We will not be Jewish Medina if we don't have Shomrei Shabbat here. So in the Mechina Kedam Tzvayit and in all our Chavruses, they become such appreciate each other. Instead of to fight, he's not Meshelem Isim, he's not going, take his positive things. He gives a lot to Am Yisrael. היא שומר שבת, I can't keep שומר, I can't be שומר שבת. I'm lazy, I, I walk, I, I don't know, I can't, okay? But he is שומר שבת, even for me, because I'm Israel okay. will save. And he said, the other side said, I'm not going to the army, but he's going to me, he's going for me, he's keeping our land. So just to understand that we really, really need each other. We can't be alone, we need each other. I'm telling you, if all the Medina will be only, only Haredim, I'm not sure who will stay here. Yeah. I don't know what will be, right? Well, yeah. Mrs. Schneider, thank you so much uh, for, for sharing with us this important message. And God willing, we'll try to spread this as far and wide in the world as possible. And Merit Hashem Keshe Yehudi should continue to be successful. And, and uh, 1,800 should be 18,000 and 36,000. Merit Hashem until Mashiach comes. The car of Mamish. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your time with us. Can I finish with one sentence? Yeah. Okay. I just say to everyone that he listened to me, just call us and take one Chavrusa from the other side and be a good friend of him and make it serious connection and Am Israel will be Bezat Hashem better and Mashiach will come. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you Amen. so much for, that, for, for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening and watching this episode. Of course, I want to mention the Dream Raffle is happening very, very soon. I think they're giving away like $10,000 as part of the raffle. So head to dreamraffle.com, thedreamraffle.com right now. Make sure to buy your tickets. Use promo code MPP. Buy your tickets. You go in a million dollar apartment in the heart of your shalim. And there's also a special extra raffle for $10,000 cash happening this week. So head to dreamraffle.com right now and get your tickets thank you for listening to this episode watching this episode let's be friends let's be friends the takeaway of this episode is if there's someone's different in your life doesn't matter if they're from her less from her whatever it is we don't live in israel maybe you watching this right now and maybe they're you know you're not dealing with that precise issue but you have people in your life that are different from you the people in your block your neighbors that are different from you reach out be friends. It should be discussed for the entire Klai Yisrael. And this should bring Mashiach, Bekarev Mamish. Thank you so much for listening and watching this episode. And we'll be back at you again with another one next week. Adios, amigos.